Hey guys, uh, I'm going to show you today how to uh, replace, how to actually fully disassemble um, uh, an MSI uh, laptop. The model number of this one is uh, GP62M VR Leopard Pro. Um, the reason I'm going to fully disassemble this computer is uh, to have the keyboard replaced. The keyboard in this computer is not working. Also, it needs a couple updates, a um, couple upgrades like RAM and SSD, but those will be covered basically in the full disassembly. It's a very easy process to upgrade the RAM and upgrade the, um, the SSD for the regular hard drive. It has uh, two, two drives inside. Now, uh, this one, it's not that complicated uh, process. Uh, just uh, have patience, make sure you uh, you see where particular screws are coming from because there's going to be quite a couple of screws and I do believe that in this one judging from other uh, MSI computers uh, which I opened so far uh, the keyboard um, you see these little holes uh, in here there's going to be some plastic rivets uh, so you'll have to uh, be careful when you remove that rivet so you can actually melt it back on or you can use a good heat gun uh, to uh, attach the keyboard uh, to the top uh, to the top frame uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing that you can also pretty much order the whole top case uh, it's called uh, either uh, top case or palm rest which will come with the metal piece which is surrounding the keyboard and the keyboard itself Okay, so let's uh, dig in and open this uh, computer up. Now, as I was mentioning, uh, due to the fact that I already had to um, upgrade the SSD, the back uh, cover of the computer was already removed. I'm just gonna show you. I mean, this is a very straightforward, very simple procedure. You just have to remove a couple screws from the back uh, case of the machine. Uh, I'm gonna show you right now. Anyways, that will make the video shorter because I don't think it's necessary to show you how to remove the screws on the back of the machine. Okay, so basically you'll have screws wherever these holes are. Once those are removed, this top, uh, this bottom case will uh, come right off, exposing the inside of the computer. Okay. Now, for example, this particular machine was uh, shipped with uh, only one stick of RAM. If uh, you want to add another one, um, it uses, by the way, it uses a DDR4 uh, type of RAM. Uh, it's recommended that you use the same one as you originally had or change both of them if you want to go to a higher frequency. Okay, so um, basically if you want to add another stick of RAM, just take the ramp, you put it at around the 45 degree angle in here, you push it down and then these uh, metal clasps will lock onto the ramp. Okay. Now this hard drive uh, was removed, not hard drive, solid state drive was removed. Uh, we put a bigger and a faster one. The original drive um, this computer came with uh, was an NGFF, uh, was an M.2 uh, SATA type of drive, which has a maximum read of uh, about 550 megabytes a second. Uh, we upgraded it with the um, NVMe type of drive, so that's a PCI Express type drive. Uh, most common one is uh, this uh, Samsung. Um, this one it's a, actually it's an Intel one, uh, it's an Intel Optane uh, drive. Uh, the speed of this uh, particular drive uh, is about 3500 megabytes a second, which is about seven times faster than the drive it originally came with. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the, the upgrade we did. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, disassemble this computer, okay? Uh, we have to remove uh, what we have to do basically we have to remove the battery the secondary hard drive the logic board uh, and the SD card and the uh, USB board from the side in order to be able to reach uh, to the uh, to the keyboard so first we're gonna remove the battery 
the battery is right here uh, it is caught up with one screw it's a Phillips screw and then once that's removed we're just gonna push it backwards and you have the battery if any of you guys want to uh, upgrade the battery uh, or uh, not upgrade replace the battery the battery it's used in this uh, computer it's a BTY-M6H okay we're gonna put that on the side now this hard drive was also disassembled before so basically you have two screws here one here one here uh, and then you'll have one more screw here once you remove those screws this board you'll just lift it up and slide it out so you will disconnect disengage this particular um, connection so that is removed once you have the removed you can put this particular one came with a one terabyte hard drive you can put up to a two terabytes hard drive in this one um, just because of the size um, fortunately uh, four terabytes will not physically fit in here so as uh, they make it a little bit thicker so yeah okay now let's start from the bottom of the, of the computer and we're going to disconnect the speakers as is right here you pull down on uh, that connection let me zoom in a little bit okay. so we're gonna pull down we disconnected the speakers the cable is being held on the board with a little tape we're gonna remove that tape and put the cable on the side okay the speakers come off uh, very easy as they use the mounting screws on the bottom case to be held together we're gonna put that on the side and now we're gonna disconnect this ribbon cable right here okay up and pull it towards you yeah, I guess this computer was open before because I see some of the screws are not put correctly back into its place but yeah let's let's not get bothered by that then we're gonna disconnect the LCD connector lift this tab up use your nail it's a pretty uh, fragile plastic tab and then you're gonna remove the cable just like that we're gonna pull it on the side then we're going to disconnect the Wi-Fi antennas. I always tell you guys, please lift the cable by holding onto the actual metal connector, not on the cable itself, as that might actually break the cable and that's a pain to reattach. Okay, so we're going to disconnect the Wi-Fi, came off, put it on the side and now with the ribbon cables disconnected on the side of the machine we're gonna move on the left side of the machine and we're gonna disconnect the usb and the sd card connector just like so now let's start by removing the motherboard screws yeah, they come way too easy, they come off way too easy, so that's a good indicator that this computer was definitely opened up at some point. Besides, I see some tape right here, which should not be, this is not the original one, uh, MSI doesn't do this kind of stuff. So my guess is that this, um, the keyboard on this machine was already replaced before at some point, but that does not change the way the disassembly and the replacement how the disassembly and the replacement work we have one more screw here one right here under the CPU and that's about it when it comes to the logic board screws now we'll have to remove the fan screws which they go through the main board and will hold the the main board 
onto the top case so we're gonna remove those screws there's two on the left side okay put them separately as these are longer screws than the logic board screws and you have two screws on this side as well Now we have all the screws removed. Uh, let's. It's a good time to double check. You don't have to remove um, the heat sink unless, of course, you want to change the um, thermal paste under the CPU and uh, the graphic card. If you want to do that, that's another eight screws. Uh, make sure you clean properly the old thermal paste before you're applying uh, the new thermal paste. Okay. And now we have right here. If you see. That is the um, uh, that is the DC jack input. So we're just gonna pull that connector out. Okay, and the main board is coming right up. Okay, let me zoom out so you get a full image of what's happening. Okay. okay. Now on this side of the board, don't lift it completely, as you will see. On this side of the board, you have the LCD cable connector, and uh, I'm sorry, the LCD, the uh, Jesus, the keyboard cable connector, and the keyboard backlight. Now, the way you disconnect those, it's a little bit different. Uh, it's a pull tab, pull push tab. Try to zoom in as much as possible. So you're gonna push on the side of the connector just like this okay not too much don't put too much pressure and that's the backlight connector and we're gonna remove the actual keyboard connector now we can fully remove we can fully remove the motherboard we're gonna set it on the side and we have this board also to remove, just caught up by one screw. And this one is coming right off. Okay. Now we have, yeah, definitely the, the keyboard was replaced. As you can see, the tears. Oh, wow. Wow. Shoot. Okay. Uh, this guy did a very, whomever did it, they actually used scotch tape to, to keep, the, um, keep the keyboard in place. Well, originally, how this would have looked, oh, sure, let's remove this stupid tape. Yeah, you know, it's a wonder that some computer shops, they still do this kind of jobs by using scotch tape inside of the computer to keep a keyboard which you're pounding on uh, and it's a wonder yeah they put these uh, spacers right here like those tapes so it keeps it away from the logic board this does not make any kind of sense but anyways I guess it worked for this customer for a little while so what you'd want to do you want to remove the black Film from here, right? So I'm gonna show it to you how it's supposed to be originally. So this would come off, okay? And now, in, in each hole here, you will have plastic rivets. Which this person, how they chose to do it, actually was to cut it so basically you can use one of these exacto knives so you can just go on top of it and you will cut it okay just like that or you can use if you have a solder gun you can just melt it that would be a better idea because when you melt it you don't destroy all the leftover plastic so that can be put back together later on by using uh, the same 
solder gun. Once you do that, the back, the metal plate, will come off. Okay. Which will expose the actual keyboard. Okay. And as I was uh, saying in the very beginning, uh, based on previous experiences with uh, most of the new computers, they don't use screws inside of the keyboard, but they rather, they rather use plastic rivets, which is holding the keyboard in place. Each one of them will have to be removed. Again, this person chose to just probably pull the whole keyboard off. He completely broke these plastic rivets. Fortunately, I don't know if you can see, he left, he, they left enough material to actually have it melted back into the new keyboard. You see, I can, I can actually grab on that one. So this would be melted and we be, will be put pretty much on top of this. So yeah, once you removed all those uh, plastic rivets, this keyboard will just pop out just like this again guys I did not know that this computer has been has had the keyboard removed before as this is not a full video on how to disassemble the keyboard but I guess you'll get the idea on how to do it so now we're gonna take the new keyboard. We're going to put it, sit it down, just like this. Okay. Now, one more advice on this uh, metal piece: make sure you re properly remove all the plastic rivets from it before you attempt to remove it because if you pull too much on it you will bend it you need this to be straight okay in order to be properly attached and to uh, to be flush with the top case okay so Now let's see if we have enough material. No, we do not have enough plastic here to hold it together. However, what I'm going to use would be a hot glue gun. Now make sure, make sure you have a good glue, good uh, hot glue sticks. Uh, Gorilla glue, it's uh, what I would typically recommend. If they have a strong, uh, strong glue, I'm just gonna open up. I'll have to put the heat gun to, to heat, make sure your heat gun is properly heated before, before you attempt to use the glue otherwise the glue won't have enough force okay so I'm gonna cut off the video for a little bit while uh, this heat gun is heating up okay so just gonna set it on the side and wait for it to heat up I'll uh, I'll get back to you once the glue is hot enough and ready to work with Okay, so the hot glue is hot enough. Now, let's just... Yeah, yeah. You can get, by the way, you can get a, a decent uh, heat gun for about $15 from any of your, any of the arts and craft stores or electronic stores probably they sell something like that. You can find a good one. This one it's from Lidl, which uses a little bit bigger uh, sticks which would last you more it uses this kind of uh, hot, uh, of that uh, glue 
So now let's uh, get to attach it. So. Make sure that you keep it down uh, for a little bit until the glue solidifies. Okay. Don't worry if uh, it's gonna look like it's bulging out. That's perfectly fine because there is enough clearance to the main board. And if you need to have it removed later on, it's pretty easy to remove the hot glue. Much easier than the plastic rivets, which the manufacturer originally used. So basically, push down on the metal plate and apply the glue wherever the plastic rivets were cut off. Okay, now we're gonna give it a little time to solidify until we move to the next holes and it's already holding it together okay so make sure the glue gets into the hole you can just push it there with the nozzle of the glue gun Sure, it touches the plastic so it has something to catch on and it makes that strong connection. Okay. We're also gonna use after the heat gun, we're gonna use a little bit of uh, tape, but we're not gonna use a uh, scotch tape. Like the previous guys, we're gonna use uh, aluminum tape, which is much stronger. Okay, I'm gonna show you that. You can find it in a hardware store, Home Depot, or Love, or whatever you might have around you. I mean, wherever you live in the US, you have a Home Depot somewhere in your neighborhood, or a Love. Okay. So we give it a little time, keep pressure on the metal plate. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why they why they use these plastic rivets. They're, they're a pain, honestly. But I guess they don't think of making their computers easy to be fixed by the end user. They want them to actually they want the customer to send the computer in for the repairs. Which is not very nice of them. Now the keyboard, many people are asking me what I'm getting my parts. Uh, I'm using, using Amazon or eBay for uh, most of the parts that I'm uh, ordering. Uh, there are other websites, you can do a Google search for the part you're looking for, but uh, yeah, Amazon or eBay should carry most, most of the parts that you're looking for.
Okay, so we pretty much filled up all the rivet holes. And now we can put some hot glue on the sides. On the sides of the uh, metal plate. Okay, mainly, mainly around here. Okay, so I just go just like that, so you get a good contact between the plate and the bottom piece. Just gonna put it on the corners. You don't wanna apply too much. Solidify. And do the other corner. Do a bit here. Don't really have to worry about using too much hot glue because it will be pretty easy to remove should the need arise. Okay. That's about it. We're gonna put a little bit more by the battery compartment, and we should be we should be good to go. That's that. And we're gonna put a little bit here. Connect the hot glue gun. Okay. Yeah, that's that's about it. Now we have uh, this metal is kept in place. Okay, we're gonna put back this uh, two pieces right here so let's see we can align the holes with those mounting screw holes okay and this one will come right here. It will keep the cables down just like that. Okay. Now I was mentioning I'm gonna use some tape here. There's no need because the hot glue is strong enough. Okay. Now we're ready to put back the boards. We're gonna start first with this uh, USB board. Ok, 
Okay. This, as I mentioned, it's caught up with one screw only. Okay. Now we're gonna put the logic board and make sure you connect the cables prior putting it there. So that you'll have, remember it was a push pull kind of a tab. We will grab this one and just push it in inside here. And we're just gonna keep it there and push these two tabs one at a time. Hold it and that's that. Gonna do the same thing, make sure the tab is open. Okay. Gonna put in the keyboard in and push the tab inside. Now that's done. The motherboard is ready to be put down. Make sure you connect the DC cable. Don't forget about it. You can put the, the motherboard down first. And then we're gonna connect that. Okay, let's make sure it's properly aligned. And there is a uh, pin which is right here on the side which that one goes through the main board right there so make sure that that pin is aligned you see it right there okay now you can set up the main board down okay good now we're gonna connect this cable just gonna push it in okay it is in and you're gonna route it through there and now we can put the screws let's start with the fan screws in that's it now we're gonna connect the cable to the USB board close it we're gonna move to the other fan make sure you have the cables pulled on the right side of the fan Okay, you don't want to pinch the cable with screw. Okay. I'm gonna put the battery back in. Now can reattach the speakers. Well, let's put this cable first, which is the trackpad. And now we can put the speakers. As this to Spots right here where the speaker gets in, and we're gonna put the connector back in. Now we can connect the LVDS cable, so we're gonna route it through these uh, places on the fan and push it right in. And use your fingers for that, you don't need to use any kind of tool, make sure it's all the way in. Close the tab. And we're gonna put the Wi-Fi antennas. Okay. 
make sure it's properly aligned before you push down because otherwise you can break the connector and that's that now we're gonna put the secondary hard drive in okay let me get the screws for that as that was open earlier time so you have these two screws which they go on the side here so you have one screw which goes in here So that's about it. Now we're ready to put the back case on. Double check that all the cables are connected. Okay, you don't have any disconnected cables before this uh, last step. We're gonna put this guy back on. Make sure the back okay is properly closed. Okay, also came with a couple missing screws which I'm gonna locate I'm gonna find some spare screws to put it in I'm not gonna do it now I don't wanna take more of the time to do that and now let's turn it on see how the keyboard it's perfectly all the all the keys are where they're supposed to be none of them are um, down or anything like that and uh, let's uh, let's fire it up let's hook it up because it's uh, low on the battery okay and we are going to test it okay